Hey guys, how's it going? Welcome to my studio. This is Paint with Lovejoy. Thanks so much for joining me today. If you're here for the first time, thanks so much. Make sure you hit the subscribe button so you can check out my other videos. And if you're here for a second or third or fourth video, thank you so much for your support. Uh, greatly, greatly appreciate it and welcome back. Um, in today's video, we're gonna be giving tribute to Van Gogh and kind of focusing on his very expressive, impressionistic style and painting uh, one of his iconic pieces. So it's gonna be a lot of fun. And Van Gogh is a very popular paint at home subject matter. So I think you guys are gonna enjoy this. With this painting and any painting that I teach, you are more than welcome to switch out colors, uh, change it up, make it your own. Um, and quite a few people do that even with the old master painting. So feel free to change out and make it what you want. What you're gonna see in the description box below is a link to a supply kit. And in that supply kit are all the colors, paints, brushes, surfaces that you might need to get started painting at home. So grab any of those extra uh, supplies that you might need and then pick up the video for the painting portion. Another thing that you're gonna see in the description box below is a link to a traceable. And a traceable is a way for my first time and beginner painters to get your initial composition on your canvas without having to stress out about drawing and without basically having to stress out. So check the link below to where to acquire the traceable. And there's also a video on how to transfer your traceable to your surface. When you are a little bit more comfortable with your painting process and you wanna take your skills to the next level, check out my online school, paintwithlovejoy.com and check out my uh, featured course on there, Paint Your Pet. And you will be painting from your own pet photograph and I'll go through the process on how to break it down and pick which photo and go through the process of painting. But when you paint something you care about, it's a whole new ball game for you. And you actually learn more and you put more energy into um, making it awesome. And it's your pet, so it's gonna be awesome. Uh, and that course is geared towards first time and beginner painters. So check it out and just keep evolving your skills as you get more and more into the creative process. So I think that's enough talking. Let's go ahead and get started painting. Okay guys, this is a really fun Van Gogh painting for my first time painters. So grab your supplies, turn on your favorite music, and as always, make sure you take your progress photos. Now with this one, um, you are more than welcome to switch out and change the background colors or your flower, co flower colors or even uh, the branch colors. So feel free to make this your own. Now we are gonna fill up the background and we're starting with kind of a medium blue and I'm using the white and then adding blue to it. And it's about a one to one ratio. Now notice the different brush strokes I just demonstrated. I want you to try those as you apply your paint. And I'm gonna encourage that you apply your paint a little bit thicker, um, especially if you're using student grade paint. Um, when you apply it thicker, you have a little bit better coverage and then it's gonna be easier to blend. Now, if you have to mix your color a second or third time, don't stress about getting the exact same shade each time. If it's a little lighter or a little darker, totally okay. You all see, you will see in this video that we're gonna add some color on top of this and change the shade. It'll be called wet on wet blending. Um, so basically just have fun. Now, if you're holding your breath right now, take a deep inhale, just relax. I'm really proud of you for painting, um, and Van Gogh's very proud of you for painting. He did it as a very therapeutic way of life. Well, let's cut that out. All right, and again, we're taking this all the way to the edges, and if you have a slightly different shade, like here I'm going for a little bit of a lighter blue, um, completely okay. I am painting on a panel, so if you are painting on a stretched canvas, meaning the canvas wraps around the sides of a frame um, and you've got an edge, I do recommend that you take this color while you have it made and paint the edges of your canvas. So you may have to kind of pick your canvas up and paint the edges, you'll get a little on your um, hands, but that's okay, it makes you more creative. All right, so here you can see I grabbed a chunk of that white, we're gonna slap it right on top of that background and then with light pressure, you just move your brush on top of it and you see where it's a little bit lighter. 
The more you move your brush, the more the two are going to mix together. You can do the same thing with the dark blue or even with teal or a new color. Again, this is called wet on wet blending. So do everything that you want to your background. Um, the shades of dark and light blue, the medium, if you want other colors in there, before you move into um, the rest of the video, the branches and the flowers. Now you'll notice as you do this, the more you push your brush against the canvas, the more your brush strokes show up, and we call those expressive brush strokes. If you want something a little more smooth, you can go over with your brush with light pressure, and that will smooth out some of your brush strokes. And here I did actually add some teal. Same thing, you just slap it right on top of the paint while it's wet, and then blend the two colors together. This is one of the more fun aspects of acrylic painting, especially for my first time in beginner painters. So like I said earlier, do everything that you want to your background um, before you move on to the next step. All right, and doing that same wet on wet blending with the white. This one's a little more fun. So like I said earlier, the more you move your brush, the more the two colors blend together. So if you want this light area, um, just move your brush a few times on top of that area to soften the edges, just like I'm doing here. All right, looking good. And like I said, it's just fun to move paint around on the canvas. Notice that you might be a little more relaxed right now than you were at the beginning of your painting process. All right, good place to pause the video and take your progress photo. I do want you to completely let your paint dry before you move into adding the branches. And I am using the small or the medium flat brush and raw sienna, the direct raw sienna. I am using student grade paint, so it is transparent, so you can see a few places um, where the underneath color is showing through. So because of that, I'm applying the paint a lot thicker. So I'm being very generous with that application. Adjust what you need to for your uh, materials that you're using um, and the style that you might wanna go for. As we add these branches, I am slightly mimicking um, the actual Van Gogh painting, but you are more than welcome if you wanna reference that painting directly or just mimic what I'm doing here on the canvas. With this video being geared towards first time painters, I have simplified this a lot. Um, and as you get more comfortable with the painting process, I challenge you to um, step up your skills and try to do more and more detail that the original has. And, but basically right now, have fun while you're painting. And it's nice to just kind of paint one of the old masters, um, especially if it's a painting that you like or that you have seen in person or have seen multiple times. All right, you're doing good. This does not have to be perfect. And even if we can see some of the blue from underneath shine through the branches, that's okay. It's still making for a very intriguing painting. And as you're doing the branches, um, if you're holding your breath, that is not necessarily a good thing. So take a deep breath and um, relax. You're doing better than you may give yourself credit for. Just the fact that you're going through the process already makes you successful. All right, so now we're gonna go for a lighter color. So we're mixing white and raw sienna. And again, rather generous, placing this on top of a few of the branches. It does not have to be exact, but by adding this lighter value, it's giving our brain the indication that we have a slight 3D object on here. And the lighter area is what kind of um, pulls forward as you look at it, um, as your brain interprets it, compared to a darker color that pushes it backwards. Because as you are painting, you are a magician. You're creating the illusion of a 3D image or 3D object on a flat 2D surface. So that's a lot of the um, fun part about painting is you're transforming a white surface into a creation that you made. So here with the small pointy brush, same thing with the raw sienna, just adding um, smaller branches. So it's easier to use a smaller brush for smaller brush strokes. 
And again, you are strengthening your power of observation as you look to see where I add something and then mimic that on your canvas. Now, when you are done with all your little branches, I recommend a progress photo. And again, completely let this dry before you move on to your flowers. So for your flowers, you can change the color if you want. You can change the design. If you're a first time painter, I want you to think of your flowers as a blob. You are painting a blob and that blob is just a circle. But by the time we're done, it's going to look like a collection of flowers. Now, if you want to get a little bit more detailed, you can do what I'm doing here, where it's like almost like a star shape. Um, I've had some students do hearts um, for their flowers. Some students have done circles that overlap each other. Um, no matter what shape or combination you choose, again, just think of you're painting a blob, a blob as a flower, you can paint a blob. Um, and like I said, that just kind of helped take away the intimidation factor for my first time painters. If you are a beginner painter and you've had some practice and experience with this, I'd recommend that you actually try one of the shapes, maybe the pointed star or reference the original and go for the shapes that you see on there. Again, strengthening your power of observation. All right, you're doing great. And if you have seen the original, you do know that there are abundance of flowers on that. Um, so feel free, you are overlapping some of the branches, you can overlap the other flowers, uh, but you do wanna put a lot of them on here and various sizes. As they are on the tiny branches, maybe it's just a little dot of white. And then when they're on the thicker branches, maybe it's more of your star shape or your overlapping circles or your larger blob of white paint. Again, I'm being very generous with the amount of white paint that I'm putting on um, because it's student grade paint. And you're noticing that pretty much every two or three brush strokes, I'm going back and grabbing a um, generous amount of paint on my brush and then applying to the canvas. And as you are getting more and more into this process of painting, um, I do want you to kind of prop your painting up and walk maybe three to five feet away from it and look at it from this distance. This distance is the normal viewing distance for most things in life and especially artwork. So getting into the habit now of looking at your painting from a distance and then maybe going back and adjusting what you feel you need to adjust is gonna help your creative process and your creative development. Um, learning to look at it from where your viewer is gonna look at it helps you make any changes that you need. All right, this is taking shape nicely. You're doing great. And don't forget progress photos. It's nice to look back and see how you've transformed that white surface into your final piece. And as you get more and more into the creative process, you will hold a lot of value in um, those photos. All right, so now we're actually gonna take some yellow, just give a little different color on the inside of these flowers as where the petals would be coming together. If you'd like to use light pink, um, or a different color or nothing at all, go right ahead and do that. And as you can see, I'm not basically just putting a blob in the middle of some of the bigger flowers. It does not have to be anything specific because this is geared towards my first time painters. And it's nice that we're using just a simplified color palette, um, white, brown, yellow, and blue. Oh, and a little teal we threw in there. But keeping it kind of simple does lend to nice results. So great job, you guys. Don't wait too long to paint your next one. I'm really proud of you. Keep up the great work. Cheers. Hey guys, how's it going? I hope your paintings turned out really nice and I hope you enjoyed the process of painting. I'm really proud of you. Good job. As you're uploading your pictures to social media, please tag me at or hashtag paintwithlovejoy or email them to me, paintwithlovejoy at gmail.com. Um, it truly is through you guys sharing my channel and videos, you sharing your work that encourages other people to paint. Um, and then when I post your guys' pictures on my social media, it encourages more people to paint. So please keep spreading the word. 
this channel is as successful as it is based on your guys' support and feedback. So you have brought it here, let's keep it going. Um, any questions, comments, things you want me to paint in the future, please leave a comment in the description box below and I'll add it to my production list. And um, keep on painting, keep on getting creative. Thanks so much for taking time out of your day to hang out with me, really appreciate it. And I look forward to painting with you in the future. Cheers.